a pool of water is contained on one side by another hinged gate. The gate is hinged at the bottom, which we're calling B, and held in place by a horizontal force at point A. That force is indicated as P in our diagram. What force would be required for equilibrium? By that I mean, how much does P have to be to overcome the force of water? Well, again, we have ourselves a moment problem. The gate is hinged at the bottom. That's a fulcrum designation, not the letter A, by the way. And P is pushing up here. And the force of water is pushing somewhere down here. So for this to be in equilibrium, the forces must be balanced, by which I actually mean the moments must be balanced. So the sum of forces around point B must be zero. I'm calling positive the clockwise direction just for fun. Therefore, zero is equal to Fw times the distance from B to the center of pressure, which I'm going to call epsilon just for fun for now, minus P multiplied by the distance from P to B, which is 3. P to B is 3. You see? And then like with the previous example, we end up in a situation where our center of applied force is defined relative to CG. And that distance between them is always defined up it's YCP. Therefore, therefore I can say epsilon is going to be the distance from the bottom of the gate to the center of gravity plus YCP. And for that information, let's refer back to our table. I know if I have a hemispherical gate, the distance to the centroid from the bottom is 4 times the radius divided by 3 times pi. So 4 times the radius, that radius here is 3 meters. So I can take my calculator and type 4 times 3 meters divided by 3 times pi, which is 4 divided by pi, thank you, always calculator, so it's 1.27324 meters. So epsilon then is going to be 1.27324 meters plus YCP. And just to be accurate here, I'm going to leave that as it was. I'm going to write that as 4 times, or 4 divided by pi, meters plus YCP as I want to limit the opportunity for rounding errors to creep. I'm gonna draw that pi a little bit better. Much more better. Anyway. So Fw times four meters divided by pi plus YCP minus P times three. We. Our goal is going to be to write this out only in terms of P so that we can use this equation to solve for P. So I'm going to want to try to figure out FW and YCP separately. For YCP, we have the same calculation as we did in the previous example problem, which comes from this slide. We have the force of water is equal to gamma, the specific weight, which is density times gravity, times the height from the surface of the fluid down to the center of gravity times the area of effect. So YCP, then, would be negative IXX times sine times theta divided by HCG times area. So this is FW is equal to gamma times HCG times area. And YCP is negative IXX times sine 90 degrees, which I will write as theta for now, divided by HCG times area. 
And the big bear of a problem in the previous example was the fact that HCG was written in terms of H. This time around though, we know the height of the water. The height of the water is given, it's 8 meters. Therefore HCG is 8 meters minus 4 over pi meters. Or 8 meters minus 1.27324 meters. So I know all of those quantities. That way I can just calculate FW and YCP as actual numbers and just plug them in and solve hopefully a much simpler algebra problem. So let's just calculate those separately for now. Again, my favorite thing to do in these circumstances would be to plug everything in symbolically, and I think that that approach will serve you better. But for the purposes of illustrating this example, FW is going to be written out separately, calculated separately, and plugged in as probably a rounded number. So, density times gravity times HCG times the area of effect. Rho, the density of water, is going to come from table A1. We are assuming standard temperature and pressure here, so we'll grab the density of water at standard temperature and pressure from table A1. Remember that for our purposes, standard pressure is one atmosphere, standard temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, therefore the density of regular water at standard temperature and pressure is 998 kilograms per cubic meter. And I will draw a longer horizontal line. Much more better. Kilograms per cubic meter. And then we're assuming standard gravity, so 9.81 meters per second squared. And then we have 8 meters minus 4 thirds, excuse me, 4 pi meters. And then we are multiplying by the area, which is half the area of a circle that has a radius of 3 meters. So area of a circle is pi r squared. Therefore, half the area would be pi over 2 times r squared. So pi over 2 times 3 meters, which I can write as 3 squared meters squared. Now, it doesn't specify a unit for its answer, but if we're solving this equation, it's probably going to be easiest if we work it in newtons and meters. So therefore, I'm going to calculate my force here in newtons so that I can get an answer in newtons a little bit more conveniently. I'll move the decimal place over. That's helpful. Much more better. So, a newton is defined as a kilogram meter per second squared. And kilogram cancels kilogram, meter squared, meters, meters. That's four meters because these are subtracted. So really I should have written that as eight minus four over pi quantity meters, but you guys, I'm sure, know what I'm talking about. Meters squared times meters times meters. Four meters. Three plus one is also four. Then second squared cancels second squared, leaving me with newtons. So, calculator, if you would deign to perform a little bit of labor for us here. Come on, you can do it. 998 times 9.81 times the quantity 8 minus quantity 4 divided by the pi symbol. times the pi symbol <laughs> times 3 squared divided by 2. We get 931,039 newtons. So I'm going to change my mind on the fly. I'm going to say that we probably want an answer in kilonewtons. So let's calculate this for now in kilonewtons. 931 Point zero three nine kilonewtons. Cool, halfway there. Then epsilon, which again remember is four meters over pi plus YCP. Actually, let's just write this as YCP. Let's let's not make things more confusing. YCP is what we're calculating now. That was negative IXX times the sine of the angle between the surface and the gate divided by HCG times area. And if we refer back to our table full of moments of inertia, IXX is 0 0.10976 times R to the fourth power. Let's see if I can remember that. 
10976, 10976, 109, 0 0.10976 times the radius squared times sine of 90 degrees, because again, our gate is perpendicular to the surface of the water, divided by 8 minus 4 meters divided by pi times the area of this half circle is pi over 2 times radius squared. So, let's not scroll up, iPad. I don't know what you're doing. Let's draw a big horizontal line again and get to work. Negative. Then I'm going to draw... Okay, how do I do that? No, I think it'll be okay. That's r to the fourth, John. Not r squared. You were so distracted by the coefficient. Which, by the way, I'll double check. 10976. 10976. Look, we did it. 0 0.10976 times the radius, which is 3 meters. So 3 to the fourth power, meters to the fourth power times the sine of 90 degrees, which is 1, divided by 8 minus 4 over pi quantity meters times pi over 2 times 3 squared meters squared. And we presumably want an answer in meters, so I will double check that these cancel appropriately. 4 meters in the numerator. 3 meters in the denominator and leaves me with meters as my answer. So here we go. 0. Point, excuse me. Negative 0. 0.10976 times 3 carat 4 times 1 times 2 divided by quantity 8 minus quantity 4 divided by pi. I don't know why I was such a stickler about that. Instead of writing 6 point whatever, 7, 3. Could have had way fewer math steps here, but, you know. We're being arbitrarily precise. That's not the pi symbol. Come on, calculator. You can do this. Look at that. Pi symbol. And we're going to have to do it again, calculator, so hang on to that. Times 3 squared. Could have canceled a couple of the exponents on the 3s, but it's fine. What are you mad at, calculator? Come on, it's fine. Leading parenthesis, I see. So we get negative 0 0.093489 meters. So we get negative 0 0.093489 meters. And with that, we have enough to calculate P. I will take this equation, plug it in down here, and solve for P. Zero is equal to, P would be equal to FW times four meters over pi plus YCP divided by 3 meters. So I will write that as 931.039 kilonewtons times the quantity Four over pi meters plus negative zero point zero nine three four eight nine divided by three meters. So meters cancels meters. I'm left with a proportion that we are multiplying by our force. And that proportion is 4 over pi. 
minus 0, 0.0. I'll just grab that number plus this thing. Aha. Divided by three. So that number is a little over a third. So we are benefiting by the lever arm that this gate is acting as. Assuming for the moment that we want to minimize the required force to hold the gate shut. Anyway, 931.039 times this proportion, we get 366.131.